Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. This is Windows 7 Art. I'm Stephen Cooley and in this episode we're going to look at how to compose a still life. Still life is a type of painting that is very popular. In this episode we're going to look at how to compose all the elements that make up a good still life. Uh, we'll try a few different types and I think it will be a good learning experience so let's jump into it. First, as we get started, I'd like to show you these beautiful still life paintings by Francisco de Zerberan. You'll notice that he's employing a technique here of darkening the background, which is really quite ingenious because it really helps all of the elements in your still life just stand out and creates a beautiful drama in the painting between those lights and darks. Uh, you can see Willem Kampf here shows this technique very well, and it's quite a good technique to employ for still lifes, but you don't have to go that route as Johannes de Heem shows in this painting. Uh, you'll notice the background is really quite detailed um, and not at all uh, particularly dark. You'll notice in some of his paintings like this one he even features scenery and sky in the background. So we're going to keep all this in mind as we move ahead with staging our own still life. Now my goal for this particular still life is to gain photographs that I can then use as reference material to paint later. So this is going to be a still life that I'm going to stage here in order to get a good photo that I can paint from. So it's really quite simple the concept here you'll notice that i have a dark background and i'm adding in some elements here that i actually just found uh, around the house i had a, a teacup plate here some apples uh, i really like the way that all of these elements tie together the dried greenery in that beautiful kind of frosted glass vase in the back is nearly the same green color as the green kettle on the left there. And the candle adds a interesting element as well because it's a light source and it could be the only light source. You notice that I turned off the lights in the room just to see how that would look. Uh, grab a few photos. Don't be sparing with your photos because you never know which you'll like to use later. Uh, but anyway, going back to the candle, it doesn't have to be the only light source. I tried a few different angles of light. Um, just choose the lighting that you like the most. But it is very popular and has been used, I believe, for a long time in still life paintings to have just one source of light coming across the arrangement. And you can see I'm just kind of taking pictures and trying different angles, different lighting, and just getting a lot of different reference photos that I can use later to paint from. But as I noticed here, those two objects in the back are kind of on the same plane and then the whole picture is just kind of imbalanced with where things are set up. And this is, is an example of a better composition of a still life because that vase in the back is kind of the tallest and it's off center and it's kind of balanced by the candle on the right. So just keep that in mind not to have an imbalanced composition. Um, and as far as where I'm staging these still lives go, um, <laughs> I just picked different areas in the house. It's really kind of a, in my mind, nostalgic kind of art because you can really just choose elements um, to make your still life unique that make you feel cozy or nostalgic. It is ultimately going to be unique to you. You 
you can see here I'm just kind of getting carried away with trying a lot of different things, uh, seeing how they'll work together. Not a bad idea if you want to just work on staging. Um, of course, we know that the real fun is going to be getting into the actual painting of a still life, which I'll probably do a video on at some point here coming up. Uh, but don't underestimate the staging of the still life because I suppose you could always go online and try to paint something that somebody else has done. But I would really encourage artists to do this themselves because um, it's going to be unique to you. Just like I've been saying, it's going to be things that that you like, and it's going to going to be a unique a unique work of art that that only you can think of, only you can do. So definitely. Um, try to find still life elements that are unique to you. And as far as the subject matter goes, there really is no limit to the different types of still life compositions you can create. The sky is really the limit. Uh, I have books, I have bottles, candles, plants, and if you have any sense of home decor, you're going to be able to get really excited with staging a still life like this. Um, so I'm just going through and getting tons of different photos that I can go through later and pick one out maybe that I want to paint. But you don't have to stage something strictly from the indoors. You can go out into your backyard, for example, and find different things, just like you're on a scavenger hunt looking for items of beauty. Bring your camera with you and just start taking photos of things that you like, whether it's flowers. Um, I noticed how the fish uh, just looked really cool in this lighting in the, in the backyard pond. Um, technically, it wouldn't be considered a still life if there was live animals, I believe. Uh, but all the same, go ahead and take pictures of it anyway, because you never know if you'll end up painting it later on. Yeah, just take your camera and take pictures of what stands out to you. There is really an art to this, to letting your eye find things that are beautiful and then staging it creating a composition that you can paint from. That's really the idea behind photography, is training your eye and learning how to find things that are all around you that are beautiful and capturing them. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going through the garden and I'm just taking pictures of things that stand out to me and compiling reference photos that I can perhaps paint a still life from in the studio later on. However, painting a still life from reference photos isn't the only way to paint a still life. If you remember the artists that I exhibited at the beginning of this video uh, were all before the time that photographs were invented. So they didn't have reference photos to paint from at that time. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab a few elements here like this. I thought this uh, skeleton key here would make a cool addition to a still life painting. I grabbed some books as well. I'm just gathering things throughout the house that I'm going to bring out to the studio and hopefully stage a still life in the studio that I can paint directly from observation. And when I got out in the studio, I noticed, I just, I started noticing things that were lying around. I found this um, really cool Civil War infantry saber that was black and gold, which was gonna work perfectly with the black and gold book that I had grabbed from inside. And this table would be a perfect spot to stage a still life on. And I could set it up next to the easel, um, which would be perfect for painting. So I just started grabbing things that were laying around that I thought would be cool to 
just stage together. I'm putting the books inside this really cool wooden crate that I found, um, but I started to notice that the background was too light, so I found a beaver pelt, <laughs> of all things, and decided to use that as the backdrop just because it had a nice dark color to it. Um, but I started putting it all into the crate, realized it was too cramped, so I decided to take it all back out and drape the pelt over the crate. And I started to then put the elements of my still life in the foreground, and I found a nice light colored book that I could have the skeleton key hang down over uh, to help that stand out. And also, I'm just trying to find a spot to have this sword featured. Um, tried a few different spots for the sword just to see where it would work best. And because I'm doing this in my studio, I can control the lighting pretty well, which can't be said enough for painting from life, um, for a still life, because lighting is key when you are working on a still life composition. So that's worth mentioning again, and you'll see later on that I start to kind of fidget with the lighting just because I want to get it just right. And I tried a warm lamp, I'm kind of shining it from below across the arrangement to see how that would look. And I, and I would really just encourage you to try out a few different things for yourself uh, when it comes to lighting. There are actually ways of, really simple ways of controlling the light uh, beyond what you see me doing here um, that I've seen other artists do where they'll actually like, for example, take a cardboard box and cut out one side of it and then spray paint the inside black and then shine a light across kind of the opening with like, let's say, some fruit as the subject matter, which allows you to control the angle of your lighting on the subject. Like, that's an example of a way you could do it. I just dimmed the lighting, and then you see I stuck this candle in there um, just so that I could get the lighting the way I wanted it. And so then you can, when you get it the way you want, you can pull out your paints, get your easel set up, uh, put a canvas on there, and then you can just start painting from life. Which is something I really want to do because I normally paint from photos. That's kind of my go-to uh, way of painting right now when I, when I need something to reference. But this is thinking outside the box for me because I've never done on-plane air paintings. I've never just painted from life, which is something I want to get into more. Another avenue for creating still life compositions that I want to touch on briefly here before we're done with the video uh, is going digital with it. You've heard me talk about a program called GIMP that I use to edit things digitally. Um, and that's what we're going to do here is I have this photo and I just thought this photo from years and years ago would be perfect as a still life. So I started to work on it digitally changing things, painting over the top of this photo, and just seeing if I couldn't create a composition for a still life that I could then paint later. Which, by the way, is great practice for you because you learn a lot about painting, actually, by doing this. And as I got into this digital composition for a still life, um, I started to notice weaknesses in my staging skills because, as you'll see here, I began to create elements like this cup uh, that just were kind of a little too isolated and not able to work together very well. And that's something that working on a still life composition digitally can help you with and train you to do is paint items that work well together.
Well, I think that sums it up for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the video, leave me a thumbs up and also a comment and consider subscribing. Until next time, God bless you guys. We'll see you in the next one.